Hey friends, welcome back to Grand Adventure. I'm your host, Mark Guido, and in this week's episode, we're going to share with you RV Whisper. By far, the best system we found for monitoring nearly all of your RV systems, either locally or even while you're away from the rig. So stay tuned. So we're really excited. Uh, this has been the week that we finally made our move to full-time RV life. Uh, and so far, so good. We're still unpacking things and trying to figure out where things go. However, uh, like I said, we're extremely excited to actually be on the road full-time. We're actually at an RV park in the Salt Lake City area where we intended to stay for a few months. Unfortunately, uh, we're a little bit disenchanted with this facility. First of all, it's really not in the best part of town, but we knew that going in because they do have the nicest campsites of any of the options that are available monthly throughout the winter months in Salt Lake City. However, with requiring a little bit too much personal information from us and also having a few too many uh, irrational rules, uh, we've become a bit disenchanted with this place and we're going to be moving on New Year's Day to a different facility where we'll be hanging out for the remainder of ski season. But we wanted to take the opportunity to share with you RV Whisper. We just got done installing this system in the rig and we're really impressed and excited with what this system has to offer. What exactly is RV Whisper? I could explain it to you but I think I'd rather let the founder of the company do so. So we're here with Ed Bender of RV Whisper, the founder, president, and CEO of the company. And I wanted to have Ed explain to our grand adventurers what RV Whisper is and what makes it unique. Yeah, thanks, Mark. Um, so RV Whisper is a monitoring system that was designed to be used by an RVer, uh, me, uh, to be used by people that use RVs uh, to monitor what's going on in the RV and alert them uh, if necessary. It started out as primarily a pet safety monitoring uh, tool. Mm -hmm. uh, I retired from the, uh, the IT industry about five years ago. And the day I retired, started a four month road trip uh, uh, with my wife and my dog. And as the weather got hotter, I would worry about leaving the dog behind for a few hours in a hot day. Sure. Worry about the shore power, air conditioner, you know, so um, after, I, after that four-month trip, I got bored at home for after a few weeks and started looking for a solution. I couldn't find a perfect monitoring solution. Now, for me, a perfect monitoring solution is probably a little over the top because in my uh, IT career, uh, about half my career was with software companies that sold software to IT professionals that was used to monitor the internet and you know corporate computers and networks and servers. So I knew monitoring really well mm -hmm. for IT professionals. And uh, so I knew what I wanted and what could be done, but I needed to make it of course simple to use so RVers could use it that are not IT professionals. So, um, so there are a bunch of features that were needed that I felt were very important for RV, the RV use case, uh, which you don't really appreciate unless you do extended RVing. Um, and so I just couldn't find what that had all the features that are really needed. So I decided yeah, well, I can just build it and see if other people agree with me that this is the correct solution for RV years. So what, what, what makes it the complete solution that you couldn't find elsewhere? Um, so the first thing is power. Um, the most unreliable thing in an RV, frankly, I found is shore power. And so uh, when you lose shore power, you need to first of all have a monitoring solution that continues to operate. And, uh, and so with RV Whisper, uh, that involves making sure this computer that goes in the RV has power and it's just powered by simple USB, you know, the micro USB cable, mm -hmm. you know, hundreds of them. And uh, so that's easy to plug into a, a USB adapter uh, in an RV that's wired to your 12 volt house batteries. 
And what I've found, that is by far the most reliable rock solid power source in RVs. Um, the next best thing is you can use, you know, a cigarette lighter adapter to a USB. They wiggle out loose, you know, when bouncing down the road, they can bounce loose. Uh, sure. Still pretty good. And then the last resort is a, uh, you know, a 12 volt USB adapter that plugs into the wall. Of course, you lose shore power, then your monitoring stops. So if you're worried about your dog overheating and you lose shore power, there's no way to know if you, if this thing, you know, relies on shore power. Um, so that was one. And then also I decided to use Wi-Fi because I found long-term RVers tend to have their own Wi-Fi in their RV. They're tired of trying to make campground Wi-Fi work and so on. And so um, uh, you also need to make sure your Wi-Fi works off of your RV house batteries also. So if those two things, once you have those two things, then it's always on, always operating. Um, that's, that was the, the number one thing is the power source. But then also you got to monitor the voltage. And so I found the simplest way is, you know, how many home monitoring systems can monitor, you know, 12 volt batteries? The answer is mm -hmm. probably zero. And so RV Whisper has this very simple clip on to measure, you know, the RV battery voltage and temperature. And, um, and so this is also, uh, uh, it, it serves multiple purposes. One is you just care about your battery voltage for all kinds of reasons. But if you're worried about pet safety, um, if your battery voltage, you know, when your RV is plugged into shore power, your battery converter is operating probably all the time in most cases, and it's charging your batteries, and they'll be at 13.2 volts or higher. When you lose your shore power, your converter is no longer charging your battery, and your battery voltage will fall below 13.0 volts after just a few minutes typically. So it doesn't sound like much, 13.0 to 13.2, but it's a huge indicator. And so, um, sure, that'll give you that'll give you advance notice before it starts getting really hot inside the RV because you'll get notification as soon as you lose power to your air conditioning. Uh, yes, so so actually the, the the default alert that comes with this when you install this, it, it assumes a pet safety use case and uh, uh, the, the the threshold, and you can customize this, but it's if the battery voltage is less than 13.0 13.0 volts for more than 10 minutes, then it will alert you. And so the more than 10 minutes is you may have, you know, maybe bring your slides in and it will drop the RV battery voltage for 10 or 15 seconds while you're doing that. And you don't want those anomalies, but maybe you do. You can just create your own alert with whatever condition you want, including zero minutes. So it can trigger right away. So, so that, that, that was one. And then um, since we yeah, added, you know, we started really just two sensors, the temperature sensor, Operates off of you know a little coin cell battery. Grab one here. You know, sure. CR thirty two. They're you know available everywhere. Pretty ubiquitous. Batteries, yeah, they last twelve to sixteen months depending on where you you have it. And then uh, so these two sensors were what you know for pet safety are really the minimum temperature and have you lost shore power. And then since then we've added all kinds of other sensors for you know better monitoring of things. You know propane, tire pressure now. Uh, <laughs> you got motion sensors on the ceiling, and when you walk under it, it'll detect motion. And water leak sensors, door open close sensors. We integrate with a um, the Hughes Waterformers Power Watchdog Search Protector, so we can monitor shore power directly, which is even more accurate than measuring the battery voltage. Well, we're uh, uh, we're pretty excited about getting this all installed and getting it all tested. Uh, so uh, let's set about doing that right now. Right. So we placed an order with Ed, and what you see here is what we received from RV Whisper. Uh, take a quick take a look and see what we have in here. Have a quick start guide. This is a battery monitor that we will be connecting in the course of this video. Uh, we have here, this is kind of the brains, the guts of the unit. This is the uh, little computer that both communicates via Bluetooth with the sensors and communicates with our network to be able to send us information over the internet. Uh, these are the temperature sensors, uh, temperature and humidity sensors, excuse me. And we ordered a total of six of these. We're gonna be putting one in the rear living area of our trailer, one in the bedroom upstairs in the front of our trailer, one in the refrigerator, one in the freezer, one in the basement area so we can remotely monitor what the temperature is downstairs where our plumbing and our hookups are and we'll put in 
we're putting in the sixth one outside to be able to keep an eye on the outside temperature. Uh, we have here a plug and cable for powering uh, the little computer of RV Whisper. Now we're not going to be using the 110 AC plug. We're going to use this to go directly into our 12 volt system so that way we still have it when we're boondocking. Uh, a couple of pieces of Velcro for attaching these temperature sensors and down here we have the full user manual so we have both a quick start guide and a user manual. Uh, now in this bag we have a bunch of extra goodies now because we ordered six sensors uh, we have two of them in here as well as these are little waterproof jars for putting these sensors outside. They can't be directly affected by rain, road spray, or anything like that. So our outside sensor, and even the ones in our refrigerator, we'll be putting in these airtight little jars before we attach them. By the way, these temperature sensors are powered by CR2032 watch batteries. Uh, we have a, another battery monitor. And... This looks to be an explanation of just the reason for the water-resistant plastic jars. So that's what we have in this package, and let's get ready to set some of this stuff up. Now, when we were getting ready to move into the RV, one of my projects that I gave myself, I didn't find enough 12-volt charging outlets in the living area of our RV. So in this cubby area behind the television, hidden from view, I tapped into the 12 volt power and installed this little power bank of chargers. And so I'm going to take the RV Whisper computer and I'm just going to take a micro USB cable that I already have, which is just like the one that uh, is included in the package. And I'm simply going to plug this in and have the unit powered and ready to go. I'm going to start out by applying our first temperature and humidity sensor, the one in the living area of our RV. Uh, so I'm just going to pull this little plastic tab out to activate the battery and take this little bit of Velcro that we have here. It's self-adhesive. It couldn't be any easier. We'll just uh, peel off the backing from this Velcro and place it right on the back of the sensor. Peel off the other side of the backing. And I'm just going to stick it to the wall right here next to our slide. I think that'll be a fairly effective place to monitor the temperature in the rear of our RV. Now that we got that one sensor configured, I'm going to go through and configure all the other sensors in the exact same way. Now that not only includes other temperature and humidity sensors that I'll be putting in the bedroom area, our refrigerator, our freezer, even in the basement so I can keep an eye on the temperature down there uh, during these freezing conditions because our plumbing is located down there. But that also includes hooking up the other sensors. That will include working with the battery monitor that I just showed you. It'll include working with the Power Watchdog from Hughes Auto Formers, which is the power management system or surge protector that we're using with this new RV. And it also even includes connecting with our existing Mopeka propane tank sensors that allow us to remotely monitor our propane levels. We've had those sensors for a while, but we can hook those into the RV Whisper system. And if you're not yet familiar with the Mopeka propane tank sensors, I'll put a link right here on the screen to our previous episode that explained those in detail. So I'll come back to you after we hook up the other sensors and I'll show you how the whole system ties together. Now that we have the sensors installed, it's time to connect them to the RV Whisper control module. We've already gone into RV Whisper's online gateway and created an account. And we've also already downloaded the RV Whisper app to our Android smartphone. An iOS version is available for you Apple users as well. So now here in the app, we're going to scroll down. You'll see no sensors added. We'll click add sensor. 
and we're going to be adding a wireless sensor now normally we'd first select the type but it's already pre-selected to the temperature and humidity we're going to type in the four digit code that appears on the label of the sensor scrolling down we're going to click validate wireless sensor and all we have left to do is name it we're going to name it living room because that's where we put this particular sensor that was the first one we showed you that we installed and we just also we're going to click the type of icon we'll choose indoor temperature now the fun part we get to actually put it right where it is in the RV so that way it'll show in the proper place on our dashboard image put it right back there in the rear of the coach roughly where we put it on the wall scroll down and register sensor all done sensor is saved and active if we go back to the dashboard now you'll see that it shows no data that's about to refresh it just hasn't refreshed yet but if we click where on the icon of the sensor there it is 67 degrees fahrenheit and 30 percent relative humidity in the rear of our coach now i wish i knew what i did with my sixth temperature sensor i've misplaced it that one will be for outdoors but look at our dashboard with all that information displayed in its proper place living room temperature and humidity refrigerator temperature freezer temperature look at all the information from our power watchdog uh, the propane tank levels via the mopeka sensors our bedroom temperature and humidity basement temperature and humidity and our battery state all showing up on our dashboard from rv whisper so let's go back to our dashboard and we'll take a look at the details behind one of our sensors we'll click on living room and when that sensor opens we're going to see not only the temperature and humidity but look at this it actually shows us history we can change it's set right now it's set for past three hours but we can change that to any number of hours and see how the temperature has changed over time now let's head on over to the alert page you can see all active alerts we have nothing that's been ignored by us and look at the alert triggers that we have set up by default battery not being charged propane levels uh, now we're actually getting into the power watchdog all the different error messages or possibly reverse polarity uh, and uh, all different kinds of triggers from the power watchdog let's actually scroll back up to the top here and let's try to configure one of our own alerts so we're going to add an alert trigger you know I kind of like their suggestion there uh, fridge uh, is getting too warm so let's let's stick with their suggestion I like that one food safety and all and we're going to choose the refrigerator sensor and for trigger conditions let's uh, go for temperature above I don't know 40 degrees that sounds good and if it lasts that way for more than 30 minutes it's going to send an alert to my account or anybody else I can figure and I'm going to add alert trigger there now it's going to alert me if in fact the temperature in the fridge goes above 40 degrees now let's uh, let's do another one um, well before we do that we'll take a look here and let's let's do it for Zo something for zoe let's uh do it if the inside temperature gets above 80 degrees so that way if the dog's behind and it starts getting warm in there we're going to choose the living room because that's where zoe's going to be on the couch that's a virtual guarantee uh we're going to set it for temperature greater than 80 degrees so we'll scroll down here and choose 80. and let's uh, shorten the time 30 minutes is awfully long uh, so let's reconfigure that to let us know if it's that way for 10 minutes and again it's going to send the alert to me and i'm going to add the alert trigger voila all set up i've got to say ed's background in it truly shows in this rv whisper app it's easy to use easy to configure and the user interface is extremely intuitive now you can actually get the same information from a web browser on any PC anywhere by logging into the website for the RV uh, Whisper Gateway. 
Uh, you saw our dashboard and here you can see each of our individual sensors uh, showing up on the web page instead of within the uh, smartphone app. We're going to click here on living room to get detailed information from that sensor. Again, it's the same information that we get from the app. There's our temperature over time, our relative humidity over time, the sensory battery, battery level, uh, the signal strength from the sensor to the control module, our sensor status, and any time that the sensor may have been offline during the recording period being monitored. Now, I am not overstating things at all when I tell you this may be my favorite RV accessory that we have ever purchased. We're extremely impressed with RV Whisper and the information that that delivers to us both while we're in the rig and while we're away from the rig. Now, you may be wondering, what if you don't have internet service? What if you are so far out in the boondocks that you don't have any cell phone signal to be able to connect this to? Do realize that you still have local information, local monitoring when you're at the rig because the RV Whisper control unit does create its own ad hoc Wi-Fi network that you are able to connect your PC or your mobile device to. If you'd like to learn more about RV Whisper, we'll put a link to the company right down in the video description down below. If you like this video, please be sure to give us a big thumbs up. That's extremely important to us. And we would love to hear from you in the comments section right down below as we do with each video that we air on YouTube every Wednesday evening. So if you're not yet a Grand Adventurer, Go right now, smash that little red subscribe button, the one right down there in the corner of your screen, and ring that notification bell. And please, we would be honored if you share the channel with your friends, family, and on social media. So until next week, please remember, life is nothing but a grand adventure. See you then.